everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Comping in a duo setting can be quite challenging on guitar. If you're playing as the only comber behind a soloist, then you have to deliver the groove, you have to convey the harmony, and you have to interact with a soloist. And that's quite a lot to take care of when you're alone playing the guitar. But there are a few different strategies that you can check out for this. And in this video, I'm going to go over five solutions to doing this. And I'm going to talk about what they do well and also what they do a little bit less well. So in the end, of course, you don't want to use only one approach. I think you're going to have a few different approaches in your vocabulary and you want to use whatever is appropriate for the song or for the tempo. And in that way, find a way to have some practical solution for when you're playing in a duo. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising over chord changes, checking out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. When I'm comping like this, then I'm not really playing anything that's there to just convey a steady groove. I'm really just comping in the same way that I would if there was a complete band there. And that means that I'm leaving the listener and also the soloist to feel the groove themselves and then sort of expecting them to be able to do that from what I'm playing and log in with it like that. Now this can work really well, but it's also very open. So if you really need to convey uh, the groove to the people that are listening, or if you need to uh, keep really well in touch with what the soloist is playing time-wise, then it's not that clear. So in that way, it's not really a useful way to really just lay down a groove. You do have a lot of freedom, so you can really interact with the soloist well, and of course you can play the harmony, and you can do a lot with the harmony, and you have the freedom to also just color the, the harmony a lot and interpret it, uh, which you might not have if you were focusing more on the groove. <laughs> I chose to call this way of comping two-layered comping and really what I'm doing here is that I have two layers in my voicing so I'm, I'm now playing voicings that mostly will contain a bass note or a root like this so we'll have a, a bass part and a chord part this is also similar to what you'll hear piano players do most of the time and it's really just coming out of the idea that most grooves that we have will have a low part and a high part and if you have both of those components in the way that you comp, then it's a little bit easier to convey the groove and to be clear about where we are. So really what I'm using here is mostly that I'll be playing the, the low part to state sort of the heavier part of the groove, and then the chord is going to be more of a, conveying what is happening on top of the groove, and I'm using the low notes to help making the accents that I'm playing with the high notes clear. That's the idea at least. And that works quite well. Of course, when you play voicings like this, you get a little bit more limited in terms of having freedom to interact, and you can also do a little bit less in terms of using colors. But it's a very nice and very clear way of comping, especially if you're playing in higher tempos, where playing a complete bass line or playing every quarter note will maybe get a little bit too busy uh, and also very difficult to keep steady. Playing walking bass and chords is a great way to have a very full comp when you're playing in a duo setting. And you really have both layers there, so you have a walking bass, complete quarter note walking bass, and then you have sort of interesting accents from the chords that you're using on top. This is something that I use really a lot when I'm playing in a duo setting. And it works ex extremely well if you're playing sort of medium swing, but as soon as the tempos get a little bit faster, then you have to spend so much of your energy to focus on figuring out the bass line that you can't do that much with how you're playing the chords. And I think when you're playing like this also, the most important part of what is happening is that the bass line keeps moving. You can get a really full comp and you get a very complete picture of 
what the tempo and what the groove is of the song when you're playing like this but you don't really have a lot of room to interact with the soloist and you also don't have too much room to really sort of interpret the harmony unless you are able to think really a lot ahead or you know the songs that you're playing really well. <laughs> I chose to call this approach the Freddie Green approach, which means that it's just strumming in quarter notes. And in the way I'm doing it here in the video, I'm not actually doing it uh, in the same way that he did, because I don't think that he played full chords. I'm playing chords with a, with a root or these shell voices or drop threes. And um, I think he mostly would play two notes, maybe one note when he was comping with Count Basie Big Band. It is certainly a way to lay down a groove. It's quite clear. Uh, and you can also really hear the harmony. So everything in that respect is quite clear. There's not a lot of room to interact with the soloist, but I think also with the kind of style that this would fit with, uh, that's maybe also not the most important thing. Uh, I do find that the sound of it is maybe um, sort of restricting you to more swing and a little bit less bebop. And I don't think it would work really well if you were to sort of start working with more modern pieces uh, like um, Mr. PC, or if you, if you go really far out like Inner Urge or so what? That's not really where this belongs. It belongs in, in other types of songs. So there is that restriction to it for sure. Another way of comping where you're putting a chord on each quarter note is to play harmonized bass lines. So here I'm playing a chord for each quarter note and I'm sort of thinking in the main chord and then in sort of small melodies that are leading towards the notes of that chord. So everything is harmonized uh, and I'm thinking about just using especially chromatic leading notes and chromatic leading chords quite a lot. It does make for bass lines that are a little bit less melodic uh, and a little bit less uh, walking bass like compared to what a bass player might play than what I would play if I'm playing sort of a complete bass line like this. That's a choice and of course you get a lot of movement in the chords and that way there's a lot happening. You play on every quarter note so you're also really conveying the groove. I don't think when you're working like this that you really have a lot of space to interact. Uh, then you would probably sort of uh, move over to playing sort of a two-layer comping. Uh, if you want to hear a good example of somebody playing this, then you should check out uh, Jim Hall on the record with Bill Evans, where they're playing My Funny Valentine. And you can also hear him kind of switch to accents and other things when he wants to play some some other material, some other rhythm, and or some, lay down uh, another mood under Bill Evans there, because he plays some, uh, some accents under him. And that's more in the sort of two-layered comping thing. You can also tell that I'm playing this with my fingers right now. And of course you can you can do that. You can also play it with a pick. Uh, Jim Hall plays it with a pick. Uh, and you can also hear that this works a little bit better, at least at this volume. It works better if you don't have uh, round round strings like I do, because you can you can hear the sort of the, the finger moving across the string. If you play with flat rounds you, you can't hear that. Uh, so it, it could also be an instrument thing, whether you want to use this or not. But I think if you play this at volume, then you can easily just still uh, do this and you won't really hear the string noises. It, at, at this volume in my room, it, it's a little bit different, of course. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I do tend to mix the different approaches. Even within a song, I will do some part two layered uh, and some parts just normal comping and maybe also some part walking bass, because those are the three that I use the most. Uh, but I will also use harmonized bass lines, especially. I'm not very often playing stuff that I need to play sort of strumming chords where I think that that fits in a duo setting. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's not possible or that you shouldn't check it out. Uh, I actually do that quite a lot when I'm playing in big band and also if I'm playing in places where I need to play more swing-like uh, things. So it certainly has its place, it's worth checking out, and it's just good to be able to do that. And I think if you're working with uh, playing in a duo setting and you have to perform, 
then you also want to be aware of the fact that it's useful to just have different textures throughout a concert because it's, it's just to the ability to create some variation is just nice for the listener and actually also nice for for you and whoever you're playing with so in that respect i think you want to check out also how to how to mix these different uh, skills and, and approaches to comping i'm of course curious if you have some advice or info on comping in duo settings like this uh, that you want to share usually there's a lot of interesting um, comments on my videos on this topic i i tend to find out new things by checking them out uh, so if you're interested in this topic then uh, i would say check out the comments and of course if you have a way of comping that i didn't talk about or something to add on some of the things that i did talk about then leave a comment on this video uh, I think everybody will appreciate that. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. The videos that I publish here every week are on finding some solid methods and good strategies to check out all the interesting things about jazz guitar and about improvisation. If you like this video and you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. It's because of the support that I'm getting from my patrons that I can keep on publishing videos every week. I'm very grateful for that. And if you join me over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.